I think we are ready to start. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, and welcome to the announcement of opportunity webinar for drop tests. So um, we have two sessions. We did one earlier this morning, and this is the afternoon session, and we're trying to cover different time zones. So yeah, we hope that um, many of you can, we're really glad that many of you can jo have joined us. And yeah, we look forward to having more people join us um, in the coming minutes as well. So. Um, before we begin, um, I would like to inform you just three things. First, if you have any questions, please use the chat box. We will have a dedicated Q&A session later on. But if you have any questions, don't wait until then. Throw them in the chat box. And second, please answer our questionnaire that we will be putting in the chat box later on. My colleague Webman will be very active in the chat, providing you with useful links, but also he'll be putting up a link um, of our questionnaire form. And we would really like to hear your feedback on the webinars we deliver. So please make sure to answer that before you leave. And last but not least, if you are on social media, please use the hashtag access to space for all and drop test to help us promote this webinar. We are active on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram at UNUSA. So today's agenda looks like this. I will start off by explaining about the introduction to the Access to Space for All initiative and drop test. After that, I will hand the floor over to our partner, ZARM, um, to Thorben Kuneman, who will be giving us an introduction to ZARM, the Bremen Drop Tower, the Gravity Tower Bremen Pro, and what you can do through drop tests. And after that, we'll be going into the details of the announcement of opportunity and application form. And after that, as I said earlier, we will be having a dedicated time for Q&A. So with this, I'd like to go into the explanation of our initiative. So basically at UNOSA, we are doing a lot of different capacity building activities really to help um, the countries and regions build an ecosystem for the development of space capabilities. But um, access to space for all is focused on space technology. And the goal of the initiative is to provide research and orbital opportunities to UN member states um, to access space and to ensure that the benefits of space are accessible to all. And you can see our value propositions on the left hand side. So by joining the initiative, we are providing the possibility of developing hands on capabilities from A to Z. What I mean by A to Z is we're providing a pathway for development, starting off with smaller and easier skills and going up to doing more complex uh, skills and technology. Second, um, through the initiative, we provide cutting edge skills for jobs and other opportunities. The information and the technology that the people acquire in our initiative can really connect to new opportunities and jobs and anything um, for the future. And third, um, it fosters international cooperation for uh, for this case in drop tests. Um, there's international cooperation between uh, the joining teams and our partners at ZARM in Germany. And of course, we at the UN will be supporting this endeavor as well. And last but not least, our initiative has a strong social impact to the country, regions and young generations. Um, you can see our access to space for our initiative in uh, numbers in the middle. We have nine hands on opportunities. Drop test is one of them. We have one annual fellowship and through these different opportunities, we have 27 awardees involving 42 entities from 30 countries. So as you can see, our initiative is expanding and we're reaching a lot of different people. Our initiative is really focusing on contributing to sustainable development goals, the SDGs. We're focusing on number four, quality education, number eight, decent work and economic growth, and number nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. But of course, the different applications that the teams build, the different infrastructure that they achieve, and the different partnerships that they form through the initiative is also contributing to many different SDGs. And last but not least, our initiative cannot be done with our amazing partners that you see there on the right hand side. Um, they are the ones that provide us with access to unique ground and space infrastructure that are usually too costly or non accessible to developing nations. So in this case, um, yeah, um, DLR and uh, ZARM are providing us with the opportunity to uh, utilize the Bremen Drop Tower in Germany. So um, in this slide, you can see the impact of the initiative. So through the participation in the initiative, it has um, really led to more partnerships, opportunities, media coverage, and for some cases, um, it has led to development of new departments and new facilities in universities. I want to 
uh, raise one example, which is the Aerospace AI and Digital Center that you can see on the left hand side. Um, this is the case of a university in Tunisia that was selected um, through the Kibo Cube opportunity. And after they have been awarded Kibo Cube, the university had been able to get the understanding and funding and support, and they were able to build an infrastructure, an aerospace AI and digital center where they can uh, promote and pursue their activities of Kibo Cubes. So as you can see, um, joining the initiative and taking part in it can really raise interest in space, but can generally lead to more investment in science, technology and innovation as well. So our initiative looks like this. We have three different uh, tracks, the hypergravity and microgravity track, which is um, aiming to build capacity for conducting experiments in orbit, the satellite development track, which um, the goal is really to do everything related to satellite development, deployment, operation, space exploration is really going beyond. And each of these tracks are supported by three different components. The first component is the hands-on one, which is the actual opportunities um, to do research and orbital experiments. The second one is the tools component, which is a collection of open source tools that are open and free to everyone. And people can use these tools to actually do the activities in the hands on component. And last but not least, the education component is the theoretical knowledge that supports both the tools component and the hands on component. So this is what our hands on component looks like right now. Um, you can see the three different tracks and on the top we have the hypergravity and microgravity track and we have five opportunities under that track. And as you can see, drop test is our first uh, our first program in the sense of they are one on the on ground opportunities and it I would say is one of the beginnings of the gradual learning path that we have to um, conduct experiments up in space. So. Why should you conduct experiments in microgravity? Why is it relevant to you and what will it bring to your country and to you? So first of all, it is an achievable entry point to acquire knowledge and skills. Um, and it is really amazing in the sense that you can do so many different types of science and technological experiments through microgravity. Um, we will explain it later on, but through drop tests, we have seen material science, we have seen biology experiments, we have seen so many different technical demonstrations being um, done in drop tests. So it's an achievable entry point to start capacity building there. And of course, it's a beneficial first step to start capacity building for space activities. So what is drop test? So it's a fellowship program between you and USA, ZARM and DLR, and it started from 2014. It aims to provide opportunities to conduct a series of microgravity experiments at the Bremen Drop Tower and the new Gravity Tower Bremen Pro in Germany. And the experiment campaign consists of five drops, drops or catapult launches at the Bremen Drop Tower or half days at the Gravity Tower Bremen Pro. And this will be conducted in one week. And before that, you have one week to really um, do the preparation and integrate the experiment into uh, the whole setup. So why drop tests? What is so special about drop tests? First of all, it provides you with the access to the state of the art and unique ground infrastructure. So the Bremen drop tower is one of the tallest drop towers in Europe and the experiment duration has been extended to 9.3 seconds, which is unmatched by any other drop facility worldwide. And second of all, the new gravity tower Bremen Pro can perform experiments up to 960 times a day, and it's not only limited to microgravity. Um, and for this case, for drop tests, we're only limiting to microgravity, but as a facility itself, it can do much more. And uh, through drop tests, we provide generous technical and financial support. So DLR will be bearing the cost to conduct a series of experiments. ZARM will be providing technical support during the whole campaign, along with on-site apartment for the students. And UNUSA will be providing financial support for the travel of the selected team. So um, we will be funding the air tickets and the accommodation for the team leader as well. So all you have to do, all the team has to do is to develop your experiment and bring it to Germany. And last but not least, through drop tests, you will experience the entire experiment life cycle. So which is writing an application, planning the project, designing, developing, manufacturing, testing the prototype, coordinating other necessary things, conducting the actual experiment itself, analyzing, presenting the results, and out, um, doing outreach for the um, results that you've achieved. So basically, you get to experience the whole cycle of doing an experiment um, from 
basically A to Z. And it's a very good experience for students, especially, and this could be done within a year. So as you can see, we have conducted seven rounds um, in the past uh, years, and you can see that we have done experiments with many different countries and regions, and the objectives of their experiments are all very different. They have conducted many different things, um, as I said, with material science, uh, with technology demonstration, and we hope to see more from you as well. Um, in the link down below, um, you can go to the awardees website, which I'll be explaining later on, but you can really see the reports, you can um, see the different uh, publications that each team has uh, published, so please take a look at our awardees website. I'd like to uh, give an um, example of one of our awardees, um, which is from Bolivia. They won drop test actually two times in the second round and the seventh round. So in 2015, the team examined and evaluated the property of nichinol, which is a metal alloy often used in medical devices. And in 2022, so July this year, the team tested 3D printing techniques using liquid resin, and it could lead to new applications in various fields. So they did totally two different things, but the technical expertise and skills acquired through these experiences have really helped them go through, um, apply them in different things. And especially for the 2015 round, I would say the technical expertise and skills acquired there helped the team develop ventilators during the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's really the experience, the knowledge um, that they gain is really applicable to other things as well. And we think this is a great example. Um, you can learn more about the Bolivia team on this uh, link here as well. And of course, I'm um, through the awardees page. So um, for the education component, we have been doing a lot of webinars dedicated to drop tests. I will show you how, how to get there later on, but you can find them in the link there. But also we've been doing a, a webinar series focused on conducting R&D in hypergravity and microgravity. We had nine webinars really covering the technical and fundamental knowledge on the benefits of conducting R&D in, in hypergravity and microgravity, what type of R&D that can be done. So on the right hand side, you see the content. Uh, we've covered different life science, physical science and technology demonstration. And uh, you, will, you can learn about the existing available platforms, opportunities, and networks. So um, if you're lost in ideas or if you want to learn more, please take a look at um, this webinar series as well. So with this, um, I think I'm done with my part. I will give the floor to Thorben so that he can give you more details about SARM and the amazing facility there. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Hazuki. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening also from my part. Um, yeah, my name is Torben Kuhnemann. I'm the head of science and an operation of the ZAM Drop Operation and Service Company. So in terms of utilizing our drop top facility, I would be your point of contact. So I start sharing my screens. Oh, you should see it. Yeah, um, yeah, I would like to introduce you to the Bremen Drop Tower as well as to our new facility, Gravitower Bremen uh, Pro, and give you a kind of a technical overview uh, presentation. Uh, yeah, you see here the content of my uh, my talk. Uh, uh, I will say some words about SAM, then go into the detail about the Bremen Drop Tower and Gravitower, and, and last but not least, I give you some important take home messages. Yeah, ZAM was uh, founded in 1985 and is a center of applied space technology and microgravity. It consists of three entities. So the main entity is the ZAM Research Institute as part of the University of Bremen. So we are out there, 80 to 100 uh, scientists, technicians, and, and administrative staff. Then we have the ZAM Drop Tower Operation and Service Company, so where I'm from. And um, yeah, we operate and maintain uh, the Bremen Drop Tower facility. You see the picture on the right hand side. Um, yeah, we are about uh, 30 person, 25 to 30. And then we have at some also some Technik AG, our stock company as a leading supplier of anti fuel control equipment for satellites. Uh, so many, so we have, uh, we do manufacturing here of magnetic talker and magnetometers and offer them to the space community. So real space hardware is built at ZAM. So we concentrate on the uh, ZAM drop tower operation and service company. So as, as I said, we operate the Bremen drop tower. So then I give you some insights of our uh, large uh, microgravity facility. Um, yeah, the Bremen drop tower consists of our outer concrete shell and inside we have the, the drop tube. 
Um, the tower is 146 meters high, the drop tube is 120 meters high, and this is also more or less the, uh, yeah, the drop uh, distance. So we, we can provide you two operation modes, the simple drop mode to drop the capsule into the desolation container or to shoot up the catapult capsule to the top and then it falls back uh, into the desolation container. Um, these are the both operation modes. Uh, the drop mode is available as 4.7 seconds uh, of microgravity, and the catapult mode is uh, available. Up, uh, yeah, this worldwide unique mode um, uh, with 9.3 uh, seconds. So yeah, uh, during each drop, the capsule has to withstand deceleration force up to 50 g, and in case of the catapult, up to 30 g. But it's uh, it's not so critical. Um, so you can use uh, commercial hardware. Due to the fact that we have to evacuate uh, this um, uh, drop tube, on the one hand side, we have an excellent microgravity quality due to the fact that there is no air drag acting on the uh, freely falling capsule uh, of 10 to minus 6 G, but um, it limits the time of, uh, of, uh, yeah, of the operation so that, that we have only, only three drops or catapult launches per day. But, uh, it was enough for 20 years. So I come back to this uh, later for the new gravity facility. But in general, each experiment or each uh, hardware is accommodated in our uh, drop tower capsules, which consist of uh, the stringer structure with, uh, uh, with the pl platforms. Um, and this is um, a modular platform. So that means that, you can, that we adjust the height according to the experiment or the needs of the experiment. And it consists of our con uh, capsule control system with the battery pack. You see here a picture of our integration hall. So, um, as uh, as probably Ms. May also has to be mentioned, um, uh, the uh, the the uh, drop uh, drop tower experiences uh, will start with an integration week, so that uh, we will come arrive. Then we will do the integration, the mechanical integration as well as electronic integration together with you here on site. We can provide you tools, instruments, and so on. And if necessary, we have, we have air conditioned laboratories and dark laboratories, uh, e.g. for uh, laser operation. The different uh, drop tower capsule types uh, are shown here. So we have two uh, to, uh, identical versions. So the short and uh, uh, the catapult uh, capsule. So the same size, it only differs in outer structure and the uh, the long capsule, which is only available for, for drop experiments. So they differ in the payload volume, but uh, you see here uh, we have very high payload masses. Usually the uh, experiments will not exceed uh, that. As I mentioned before, so each capsule is equipped with a capsule control system, the CCS and, uh, and the battery pack. You see here a picture of our National Instruments PXI system, so we are able to control your experiment, but you can also use your own control computer in the payload area. We have an interface board here with a different, different analog and digital in and outputs. You see another one, so with SMA plugs or uh, uh, sub-D connectors. Um, your experiment uh, can be operated with 24 volt DC during free fall, uh, so there is no cable anymore at the at the capsule and once we are uh, connected to the to the docking station or uh, to the to, to the uh, here as you can see here at the integration area so then you, we, we charge the batteries with 27.6 uh, volt dc yeah you have uh, 1500 watts uh, of power available once uh, if we only use the batteries so additional batteries can be implemented if required so you see here the four connector types, and then uh, each connector has two power lines, so that we have in total eight power lines. Yeah, um, yeah. I would like to show you a short video so that you get some uh, impressions about the Bremen drop tower. <laughs> Welcome to Zahn, the center of applied space technology and microgravity at the University of Bremen. Here we are operating the Bremen Drop Tower, a large microgravity lab using the principle of free fall for experiments under conditions of near weightlessness. But how do we use free fall for microgravity research? What would happen if I had scales stuck to my feet and jumped from a diving platform into a swimming pool? 
it would show almost zero kilograms because I'm in free fall. The only weight shown on the scales would be the result of the air drag. We could observe exactly the same reaction of the scales if we were jumping on a trampoline. In this case, the scales would show almost zero weight all the way from going up to falling down again on the trampoline. And now we will see where the microgravity experiments take place. For a drop experiment, the capsule is pulled to the top of the drop tube to a height of 120 meters. From there it drops for almost five seconds before it lands in a container filled with tiny polystyrene balls, like these. <coughs> the most extraordinary feature of the Bremen Drop Tower is the catapult system. It allows us to shoot the experiment from the bottom of the tower up to its top, from where it falls down again into the deceleration container. This way, instead of 110 meters for a simple drop, we can use a distance of 220 meters for free fall, providing a microgravity duration of almost 10 seconds, unmatched by any other drop facility worldwide. Another important feature is the fact that the free fall takes place in a vacuum. It takes these vacuum pumps one and a half hours for pumping out 1,700 cubic meters of air out of the drop tube. Thanks to this procedure, we can eliminate the air resistance almost completely and achieve a very high quality of microgravity. The experiment takes place in only one millionth of Earth gravity. Teams from all over the world and from all kinds of scientific fields come to Bremen to use the drop tower for their experiments. And the demand for experiment time is high. This is why we build another drop facility using a completely new technology which allows us to carry out hundreds of experiments every day. Stay tuned. Okay, thank you, Andreas, my colleague. So as, as you mentioned, so stay tuned. So uh, for the Gravitor, I will come in the main next so in, a, uh, in a, some, uh, some minutes. Um, I will like, give you some facts and figures about the Braven Drop Tower. Yeah, we started in 1990 with operation. A lot of microgravity experiments have taken place at some so far. And you see here the different research areas and also the percentage, how many drops they have performed so far. You see we have a lot of combustion, fundamental physics and fluid dynamics experiments. Um, the reason is that uh, um, we have internal SAM groups. They, they can use uh, our facility very often. And uh, from external groups, yeah, you have to do a campaign uh, uh, staying for one, uh, for two or for three weeks at, at SAM. And so if, if you have if you're on site, so then you have uh, more or less a flat rate uh, utilization. Yeah, then um, astrophysics uh, is also a hot topic at our facility. Then we have some material sciences experiments. So probably the time uh, if you melt something is not enough. Uh, so the, uh, as, as well as uh, for biological experiments, they need often also longer microgravity, but, but fast processes can be investigated here at some as well. And then, uh, yeah, we do dedicated hardware tests for space components uh, in our drop tower to prepare them for, for the space missions and students programs, yeah, where, uh, drop test is one of them and uh, chemistry as well. Yeah, students programs, uh, just to mention, yeah, you are aware about drop tests, you, you are right in, uh, uh, right in this, uh, this uh, uh, experience series. Um, then we have uh, Petri, so a similar program by ESA Academy, so over, uh, for ESA member states, uh, members from ESA member states. And then we are also involved in Rexos, Bexos, rocket and balloon experiments uh, from Kiruna, Sweden, also available for uh, students. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, mission preparation, so the Bremen Drop Tower could be a stepping stone into, into space, yeah, so that means uh, you can test daily test uh, and with commercial hardware your 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 prototype your yeah you you realize this, uh, some uh, an easy experiment and then based on this uh, achievements you develop uh, more complex experiments so then you can go the step further to a longer microgravity period and also to validate your yeah phenomenon or what else uh, you have in mind and then also prepare your, your experiment for a space operation. There was an ultimate 
active targets the ISS. So at the drop tower, you can we can do yeah the integration testing, the preparation for for another flight opportunity, and as well as the qualification. And this was uh, experiments and and technology uh, or hardware accelerometers or deployment tests uh, of of uh, yeah antennas and and so on. Yeah, the same is uh, valid uh, for the new kids on the block. So as a as I to, uh, tell, uh, um, um, uh, tell them, uh, uh, name them. Uh, so we have here uh, the new ones from the US, the Blue Origin and Up Aerospace, Virgin Galactic. Yeah, you might heard heard about it. Or the European One PLD space and uh, Super Express, uh, the commercial uh, activities uh, from our colleagues from SSC. So there, there are a lot of things ongoing, but the drop tower can be. Yeah, uh, an easy entry step uh, to do uh, or to pre prepare experiments uh, for for those uh, flight opportunities. As yeah, space exploration and space missions uh, um, are uh, yeah, or especially the space exploration is a hot topic right now. Uh, I have here a sample of uh, the or I made a photo. Uh, of, the, uh, of the soil sample here uh, that was exhibited at the ISC in Paris this year. So it's a soil sample from Astro Ryugo, uh, which came back uh, by the Hayabusa 2 mission or the Hayabusa 2 um, uh, uh, spacecraft. So this was a very successful mission. So you see, yeah, it is feasible to bring some soil samples back to Earth, but uh, it, <laughs> a lot of uh, Preparation was uh, required, and uh, yeah, and this sample horn and and other uh, subsystems of this mission were tested at the Bremen Drop Tower yeah, several years ago. So uh, you see, so that you can prepare hardware for for your space exploration mission, for for instance. And then the Moon and Mars could be the next target. And here you need partial gravity, and partial gravity means yeah, Moon or Mars gravity. And for this, and with uh, and uh, and uh, having a higher uh, ex experimental petition rate, uh, we uh, developed our Gravity Tower Bremen Pro technology, or also this this new facility. It's a new facility, only 60 meters high, and accommodated in our integration hall, uh, and it's based on a hydraulic winch system. So we are able to pull up and pull down a cabin, which shown here. Um, with a maximum acceleration of uh, 5G here in this tower. And inside this cabin, we have uh, uh, an experiment uh, or our experiment capsule, and this will be decoupled after the acceleration. Then we have a free falling phase, and then the experiments will fall down, and then we will be decoupled uh, or a couple both uh, again. So it's the same effect if an, if an elevator moves you up. When you stand in the and then with a higher acceleration, then it stops a while. So then you move up from the floor, and then the cabin of this elevator only just controls the distance to 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 you and and the walls. So then you have a freely falling phase, and this is uh, the principle of this uh, new uh, facility. And another advantage is that, yeah, one advantage is that you can do this very often. Yeah, you can see you can often use an elevator and there is no need for a vacuum. And, and we can also have a clamp mechanism so that, that we have all, uh, so a movement so that we achieve a partial or partially a partial G gravity. So e.g. Moon or, or Mars. So, and as, as I said, uh, the capsule is inside and uh, stands here inside. And then we are able to perform 80 experiments per hour maximum uh, with this uh, new hydraulic, hydraulic uh, winch system. And it means uh, when you do uh, a 12 hours operation, on, uh, then we can uh, have uh, almost uh, 1,000 experiments a day. Yeah, due to the uh, lower height, uh, we achieve only two and a half seconds of microgravity, but this is very often, especially for preparation. And then uh, uh, the partial G activities with, uh, with Moon and Mars. And then microgravity, we achieve uh, a quality better than 10 to minus 4 G. So as I said, the same standard ca uh, capsule can be used. And you see here the picture uh, of the uh, standard capsule inside this new gravity tower. 
In terms of uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the operation of this new facility, the experimenters can do it by themselves. So they will take the seats at the control desk and from the control desk you have this interface here and then you can adjust uh, parameters like the acceleration, so initial acceleration, deceleration, and then the system automatically uh, calculate uh, the, the microgravity time. Then you can add moon or mass, blah, blah, blah. So as, as you, you know, desire on it, it's required by the experiment. Yeah, at a later development step, probably you can use uh, uh, um, uh, an AI um, capability so that the experiment and the facility communicates and find out the best uh, values for for the experimenting or for the experiment and, and do the experiments um, yeah uh, with uh, with the AI capabilities. Here you see a graph uh, with uh, maximum acceleration so we achieve 5G then we have the two and a half seconds microgravity and again my uh, 5G. So this is the maximum value. We can lower the uh, initial acceleration. So then, uh, but then you have a lower microgravity time or um, uh, partial gravity time. And, and then, so you can adjust it, uh, each kinetic parameters as, as desired. Yeah, so again, I talked too much. So then you see a video about the new facility. Welcome to the Bremen Drop Tower. For more than 30 years, we are carrying out experiments under microgravity conditions. And from now on, we are doing this not only in the Bremen Drop Tower, which offers the world's longest microgravity duration, but also in the new Gravity Tower, which offers the world's highest repetition rate. <laughs> Like the drop tower, the gravity tower is making use of the principle of a vertical parabola. Like on a trampoline, an object is already in free flight after an initial acceleration, during its fall up and when it's falling down again. So, how does this work? The gravity tower uses an airtight slider, which is accelerated against gravity and air drag by this hydraulic wrench. Therefore, this system does not require a vacuum chamber. The gravity tower can perform up to 960 experimental flights each day and thus is able to meet the increased demand of scientific research. Scientific experiments require an excellent quality of weightlessness. Therefore, already during the initial acceleration, the experiment is mechanically decoupled from the slider in all but the vertical axis. During microgravity time, the experiment is fully decoupled and free floating inside the slider. In this test flight, you can see the gentle initial acceleration, the floating in weightlessness and the soft deceleration. This high quality and repeatable boundary conditions are essential for scientific research. The experiments we performed in the Gravitor so far showed that we achieved a very high quality of weightlessness similar to the Bremen Drop Tower. This means today we are offering the longest microgravity duration and the highest repetition rate worldwide. And the best thing is the scientists do not have to choose as both systems are 100% compatible. So they can easily perform the experiment in both facilities. Okay, thank you. Yeah, as, uh, as you could hear, so um, yeah, you can decide what kind of uh, facility you would like to use and what is the best uh, for your experiment and also during drop tests. Uh, you can do it, yeah. So um, uh, that means that we can start probably with a with a gravity tower, and you can do a lot of uh, test experiments to to prepare your your experiment uh, for a longer microgravity period, for instance. So and also uh, f figure out probably some some issues uh, uh, what could happen uh, in microgravity, so that you can switch between both facilities also during uh, um, the flight week uh, with five drops or catapult launches, uh, which is uh, the equivalent of, of five half days. So you can do three half days and two fly, uh, two catapult launches, and you can mix it as as, uh, as desired. Yeah, we can have then you know, for your experiment, uh, 9.3 seconds of weightlessness uh, with a catapult, and this is very high quality. 
Then with the gravity tower, yeah, a thousand uh, up to thousands uh, experiments a day, and the partial gravity option. The partial gravity option is 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 at the moment under uh, implement uh, implementation. So um, in January we have uh, the first uh, tests uh, flights, and uh, or we finalized uh, the test uh, with uh, test flights uh, this operation mode. And uh, yeah, the the payload user guys will be updated then in February or late uh, late January, so that you can see okay, this this uh, this operation mode is not implemented in the, our payload user guide. So therefore, we decided that only microgravity experiments uh, uh, can take place uh, through the drop test uh, 2023 uh, uh, call. And so please keep this in mind. Yeah. And we can use the identical, identical uh, payload uh, capsules and have with with our capsule high payload capacities. Yeah, you say you see it here. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, uh, payload uh, masses are uh, can can be accommodated, and we have the height from almost one meter in the standard capsule. Um, then another important uh, thing is that we have. Normal pressure inside it, especially when we do the uh, uh, Brayman drop tower experiments. So with uh, with in drop or catapult launches, then the capsule is uh, closed by a cover, and this uh, this uh, cover is uh, pressure tight, so that we have normal pressure of one bar around one bar inside the capsule and outside the vacuum. So with the vent line system of the capsule, you can have a vacuum or to, you can release gases out of your experiments. There are a lot of things uh, possible. With uh, our uh, sort of, uh, capsule control system, we can do the experiment control, but as I mentioned, you can also use your own uh, uh, control PC or what else, what you require for, for controlling your experiments. We can do the triggering of your experiment, uh, especially a microgravity trigger, and uh, we have uh, a data acquisition system so that we can uh, collect data from exhalation, temperature, pressure, and what else, what is required. As I mentioned, the batteries, 24 volt DC, keep this in mind. And uh, uh, we can provide you uh, uh, equipment, especially here a new camera system. We have the Phantom Miro 321 uh, system available, uh, a full HD uh, camera system with almost uh, 1,500 uh, 1, uh, frames per second and an internal storage so that you can do a lot of experiments and have not to download it uh, between flights, especially for the uh, gravity tower operation. Then if you need a heating or cooling circuit, we, we can add it uh, as, as desired. Yeah, you see here, we give you a lot of technical support and we, yeah, we integrate together your experiment, we perform together the, uh, the experiments with you and if something happened in between, so we are we are on your side, and we yeah are happy then to solve any issues uh, together with you. But before that, it's very very important read our payload users guide. Yeah, you, you will find it on our uh, ZAM website. Uh, uh, then go to the drop tower and experiment support, or before you have to click to yeah to our English website. Then you can download it. Um, and please read it very, very carefully. Yeah, so there are all information included. If you need a kind of an appetizer um, of some other uh, some other videos about uh, ZAM and what's going on at the drop tower, but I would like to mention go to playlist and there's a playlist uh, of uh, former microgravity experiments which taking place at the Bremen drop tower. So that if you need some further ideas or uh, insights, uh, what does what does it mean to do experiments in microgravity, you will uh, get there some some uh, new inputs probably. Yeah, as uh, Hazuki also showed in the presentation, so take a look at uh, what uh, have done so far in the former uh, drop test rounds. And yeah, a lot of different experiments uh, are possible. I would like to mark here a special one because there is no need that you uh, uh, implement your experiments in our drop tower capsule. So we can also do some test experiments in, in this way uh, that uh, here is a, is, oops, sorry. Um, uh, here's a deorbiting sail, um, which was deployed during free fall and in vacuum. So they, the team uh, made use of, of our uh, vacuum chamber here, for instance. Yeah? So then this was filmed and they looked how such kind of 
yeah, the opening say can deploy it. And then, yeah, a lot of things are possible. Have good ideas, have crazy ideas. And then I'm looking forward to receiving your, or we looking forward to receiving your proposal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thorben, for the really informative uh, presentation. Um, his presentation and also mine are already on our website, so um, you can download that as well. And uh, now I'd like to go into the application form and the announcement of opportunity document. So I will share my screen. And while I share my screen, if you have questions, this is your chance to ask us. If you have any technical questions, Thorben is here. If you have any admin questions, um, myself and Wenben, we're here to answer your questions. So please make sure to write it in the chat. And I've seen a few questions. Thank you. We'll be answering that later on. So. First of all, I'd like to um, inform you how to get there, <laughs> how to get to the place on our website where all the information is. So when you click, when you type in UNUSA, you would get to this main web page. Um, if you're lucky, yeah, um, drop test would come out at the top, um, but also you can find it here. So in focus, we have a whole um, place right here for access to space for all. So you click there. And then you come to our Access to Space for our Initiative website. And under the initiative, as I explained, drop test is under the hypergravity and microgravity track, and it is a hands on component. So if you click here, you get to the drop test main web page. Basically, anything new, anything um, that you need to know will be under news. So as you can see, um, the information about our webinar, the information about an uh, interview article, and the information about, uh, what is it, uh, the webinar series is here. But the first thing you would need to look is under rounds. And this is where all the information um, will be updated um, for this drop test round that is open from uh, the 14th of November to the 22nd of January. And basically, all we ask is for you to read all of the documents here, take a look at the different websites here. So, um, first of all, um, the announcement of opportunity documents, please ignore the expression of interest because we are um, we have already closed that. So basically for this opportunity, you would need to read the announcement of opportunity, the application form and the evaluation table. And the reference materials are basically what Thorben has already explained, the user's guide for the Bremen Drop Tower. You can also go to the uh, general information of the Bremen Drop Tower website. So this is a ZARM website, which gives you more information about the different things you can do. And uh, this is the drop test webinar website that I had in one of my initial slides. So we've been doing a few drop test webinars in the past, so you can take a look at them. Uh, Basically, I really recommend one webinar, which is called the experiences from the past winners of drop tests. Um, this was done in 2020, but I still feel that the information is very relevant as we invited uh, many of our past awardees from drop tests. So 2014, 2015, 2016, you can see the many different awardees here and they presented about their experience, um, what they did through drop tests and how they have gained after that. So please take a look at this webinar. I think it's uh, really relevant for all of you. So going back under that, we have the webinar series on conducting R&D in hypergravity and microgravity. You can find all the documents, the PDF and the videos on YouTube here. So yeah, basically, please take a look at all the reference materials and please read the documents here. But be, yeah, um, now I, I'm going to go through the different documents here. So the announcement of opportunity document is a PDF. Um, this is one of the most important ones. So I am going to open this in Word because I highlighted a few things. So it's the same document. So um, basically, uh, drop test is open for applications until the 22nd of January 2023. So you have around one and a half months to fill in your application form. Please make sure to send it in by midnight CET. This is Vienna time. So some countries, it still might be the 22nd of January, but we need it at 22nd January 2023 at this time in Vienna. So please make sure to um, send it in by this time. Sometimes we receive applications later on and it's a bit problematic. So please make sure to send it in um, by this timing. And as I've explained, drop test, basically we offer the opportunity of conducting five drops or catapult launches in the Bremen drop tower or half days in the gravity tower Bremen Pro. 
and the number of selected applicants uh, is one team leader with four team members who are member states of the United Nations. And teams may be larger, so you can have a team of, let's say, six or seven people. However, the financial support listed later on is applicable only to the one team leader and the four team members. So if there's sixth member of the team, seventh member of the team, your organization would have to fund them. So please make sure to be aware of that. Um, I'd like everyone to make sure to read this document, but I'm just going to go through the outlines. As I said, the deadline is the 22nd of January, and we will take one month to conduct the selection, and we will um, inform everyone in February 2023. After that, if you are selected, the preparation of your experiment will start from March until around the fourth quarter of 2023. So the Drop Tower Experiment Series right now, um, we have here fourth quarter, uh, 2023, but if your experiment setup is already ready, let's say um, earlier than that, we can uh, uh, discuss with ZARM and we can arrange a schedule earlier. Um, but yeah, it will depend totally on the uh, development of your experiment prototype. But basically, yeah, this is the schedule, so you'll have time within the year to develop your experiment, bring it to Germany and do the experiment, uh, the two-week experiment series um, in the fourth quarter. And then after that, you will have around uh, three months to fill in your uh, final experiment report, and it is due on the 31st of January 2024. Um, the next part is very important as it is eligibility criteria. I saw some um, questions in the chat already. Um, this opportunity is open to entities located in the member states of the United Nations, and it's open to government organizations, research institutes, universities, and other public and non-profit um, organizations. Um, if you have applied to drop test before, you can see that we have enlarged our scope. Um, before, it was only open to research institutes and universities, and it had to be part of a student syllabus, but we wanted to be able to provide this opportunity for more people. So from this year, from this round, it's open to government organizations, space agencies, research institutes, universities, and other public and uh, non-profit uh, non organizations. Um, as I've explained earlier, each team should consist of up to four team members and uh, four team members who are endorsed by the head of their institutes and one team leader who is responsible for all matters related to the application. Um, and I'd also like to mention that changes to the composition of the team are not allowed after the application has been submitted. We are looking, um, when we're doing the selection process, we are looking at each team member, their backgrounds, what they bring to the uh, experiment. So we really need to understand the team composition. So you are not allowed to swap team members, swap, change team members after the submission. Um, if there's any urgent issues or uh, let's say health issues later on after you're selected, of course, we can discuss about that. But uh, in, gener in general, I would say that uh, you cannot change the team members. Um, here, applicants must be uh, able to show that they have their respective entity support through a letter of endorsement. So um, in the application form, which I'll be showing to you later, um, you would need the signs and the stamps from their organization, but you would also need a letter of endorsement. We would we really need to see that your organization, your institute is supporting you um, to be part of drop tests. The next page is also very important. It is the selection criteria. We will be looking at all of these aspects here. So the scientific and techn technological value of the proposed experiment, the relevance of microgravity in the proposed experiment, and the relevance of the drop tower utilization. So why are you doing this experiment in microgravity? Why do you need to use the drop tower compared to different other platforms that are available? So you wouldn't really need to justify why you would uh, your experiment needs to be done through drop tests. Um, of course, the general feasibility of the proposed experiments are something that we will be looking at. So the setup, the procedures, the schedule that you have in mind, um, next, the organization realizing the planned research project. So we would need to understand the team composition, as I've explained earlier. The next part is the availability of financial resources. We will be asking this in the application form as well, but we need to understand that you have the financial resources to develop your experiment and bring it to Germany. As I've said, the other parts of, um, like, let's say, uh, the transportation of your team. So uh, for you to come to um, Bremen, for you to uh, stay there for two weeks, the accommodation, we got that covered. But for you to 
build the prototype and bring it to Bremen, we don't have that part covered, so we need to understand that you have the financial resources to do that. Um, next, the overall presentation of the experiment proposal. Of course, that's important. The next one, the communication and dissemination plan. This is um, drop test is a capacity building opportunity, and we don't want that knowledge, that experience to just stay within the five team members. We want you to share this experience with your country, with the young generation, with the many students in your university, within your institute. And we want everyone to be more interested in space and microgravity experimentation, science, technology, and innovation. So we would really like to see how you're going to communicate the results, how you're going to disseminate what you learned through this experience. So we will be valuing this as well. The next one is inclusiveness at the United Nations. In all of our programs, we are uh, aiming for a 50-50 gender balance. So um, if there is um, many proposals from different teams with, let's say, an only man team, and there's a team with a 50-50 uh, men and women balance, of course, we would choose the latter. So um, please um, consider the inclusiveness of your team as well. And last but not least, we will be uh, checking the link between your project and the sustainable development goals, what your project can do to contribute to the sustainable development goals. So um, in this sense, I want to go back to our website here. So um, we're doing that uh, announcement of opportunity document, but here you see the evaluation table. And when you when you click that, you will go to an Excel spreadsheet that looks like this. And here you can see the different weight we have to put into the different criteria that I've just explained. So of course there's a difference. There's 15% and 5%. Of course we'll be valuing all of them, but you can have a general idea of what we're going to value. And of course the scientific and technical value, the relevance to microgravity and the utilization of drop tower are very important. And of course the feasibility but we will be looking at all of the things I've mentioned earlier. So yeah, take a look at this evaluation table to get an understanding of, yeah, how we're going to score things. And going back, sorry, to uh, this, the selection criteria, I also want to uh, emphasize the sustainable development goals. So when you look up um, on the internet, you just type in SDGs, UN, or I think with SDGs, you would get here to the United Nations website on the sustainable development goals. And um, down here, you can see the 17 goals, as you can see here. And let's say I click on this one for uh, an example. Basically, each goal has targets and indicators that support the realization of these goals. So basically, um, please look at the targets and the indicators. Maybe the indicators are a bit too much in the level, but please at least look at the target level and connect that with your project. So what can your project do to contribute to one of these targets, one of these indicators? And um, as you know, um, with their 17 sustainable development goals, and there are 169 targets. So there's a lot that you need to cover, but of course, uh, please find something that's relevant and show us the link because we value that a lot. Okay, sorry, going back, the requirements for the experimentation are basically, please read the user's guides that Thorben had explained earlier. Um, these are really crucial for you to understand what can be implemented, what you can do at the Bremen Drop Tower and the Gravity Tower at Bremen Pro. So please take a look at this. The schedule, I think, is uh, relatively written uh, clear and as written here. So February, we select you. And after that, from March until the fourth quarter, you will have time to prepare. Um, we will be working with you intensively. So you will be preparing an experiment progress report. You will share that with Zom, and we will be consulting with you to finalize uh, yeah, what you will actually do um, in Bremen. And after that, you will come to Bremen one week of experiment integration and one week of the actual experiments. And in January, you will submit the final experiment report. Um, going back to the financial support, I've explained this earlier as well. So basically, uh, the drops, the catapult launches, these experiment opportunities are uh, funded by DLR. Uh, you and USA will be basically paying for your trip to from your country to Bremen and back. We will also be paying for the accommodation of the team leader. And Dia, uh, sorry, Zarm will be uh, paying, well, they will be providing the team, the four 
uh, students uh, accommodation near uh, the Bremen uh, drop tower facility. So basically, as I said, all you need to do is develop your experiment and bring it to Germany. Um, besides that, I think the uh, announcement of opportunity form is very clear. So I will move on to the announcement, uh, sorry, the application form itself. So this is the application form. Please read it carefully. I will just jot through um, some places that I really like to emphasize. I think this is basic information. Um, let us know what your title is and uh, what your goal is. This is the part I was talking about the certificate. So um, you would need to have it signed by the project coordinator, which is the team leader here. And this part approved by the applying organization. So if this is a project by University A, you would need to have the project coordinator, your team leader sign your information, but also you would need to have it signed by the head of University A. So please make sure to keep that in consideration because I understand sometimes in some agencies, some organization, it takes a while for you to get the sign of the head of the organization. But we need this and we need the endorsement letter as well. So please consider the time that you need to get these documents ready. And if this is an application from, let's say, two universities, universities A and B, you would need the sign of university B as well. So any organization that's applying, you would need to have the sign of the heads. So please consider that um, in your timing when you fill in the application form. And if it's university A and B, you would need to include information, not only the signs, but the information of the head of applying organizations in the next section as well. After that, we go into the team composition project coordinator. This is only one person. And after that, uh, we have the team members. So please copy and paste um, and add sections for as many team members as you have. And please note that all team members must belong to applying organizations that are eligible. So if it's a joint organization of University A and B, all the team members have to be from organization uh, from University A and B, from Space Agency A and B. Please make sure that the team members and the head of agencies, the head, uh, the parts that I was explaining above, all link to each other. And if you have external support, so let's say you're working with a specific company to utilize their testing facility, or you have an advisor from uh, a different university, um, you can include them here in external support. So um, please don't put them in the team because they're not part of the team. If you're having external support, especially from uh, organizations that are not eligible, so like companies, please make sure to put them here under external support. Okay, after that, it's project uh, proposal abstract. I think that's clear and the mission objectives. So the mission statement, so contribution to capacity building, as I said, access to space for all drop tests is a capacity building opportunity. So we really want to understand how conducting this experiment will contribute to capacity building in your country. So please um, mention that. The objectives I think are clear as well. Relevance to the sustainable development goals. Um, as I've explained, um, each sustainable development goal has a target and indicator, so please link as um, please read them and link um, as much as you can link and as much as you find a connection. 14 outcomes and deliverables, novelties. I think this part is relatively clear. The mission requirements, uh, we're asking for three. So mission requirements, uh, design requirements, and operational requirements. And for you to fill in the requirements, you would really need to understand the Bremen Drop Tower uh, user manual. So please make sure to take a look at them as well. This part is the experiment specifications and detailed description. We understand that it's very hard for you to have the full idea ready um, <laughs> by the time you send in your application form. But for us to decide and select your project, we really need to understand the feasibility and if you understand the specifications and the information on the user manual. So um, we would like you to inform us with all the information that you have. Please throw in as much information as you can and we understand that it might be hard, but please throw in as much information so that we will understand what your idea is. So basically the main specifications, the size, the values of units, the 3D view, the external dimensions. We need to make sure that you know it fits in the capsule. It's in line with uh, the drop tower itself. So please include this information. 
We would also like to understand the system block diagram and the subsystems that you're using, the technical heritage. From here, we want to understand how you're going to assemble, integrate, and test. So if you're working uh, with other uh, institutes and using their assembly facilities or testing facilities, please include that information. Uh, 6.2 is verification. So uh, we would like to understand how you're going to verify your different mission, design, and operational requirements. So please make sure to include that information. Um, seven is schedule. So we have two points here. It's development schedule under 7.1 is more before, uh, more on the things you do before coming to Bremen. So when you are developing your experiment prototype. And the experiment schedule in 7.2 is rather what you're going to do in Bremen. So um, please identify um, the difference between these schedules and yeah, um, give us as much information as you can. For the budget, um, as I've explained, we'd like to understand the cost and if you have secured the budget and um, the budget plan. Um, nine is transportation to Germany. So um, of course you can bring it in your luggage or you can maybe ship it, do whatever, but you need to bring it to Germany. And we need to understand that you know how to do that. And let's say if you're shipping, you would need to consider the transport and custom arrangements and the different uh, yeah, information that you would need to do your research on. So please make sure to um, uh, do your research and uh, find a way to bring it safely to Germany. Uh, number 10 is feasibility and risk analysis. So um, let us know that you've considered the feasibility and risks that um, may occur and um, let us know that you know how to overcome them. Um, number 11 is communication and dissemination plan. As I've explained uh, earlier, um, this is a capacity building opportunity that we would like you to disseminate the information and really inspire the young generations, inspire everyone around you in your country and region. So um, please provide us with the detailed plan of what you're planning to do. Let's say a social media campaign or you're going to have workshops with uh, schools, or uh, do uh, events, um, please let us know what you have planned so that you can share the amazing experience that you're going to have through drop tests to everyone. Supporting documents, if you have any, please list them here. And the last part is abbreviations and references. Yes, um, it's 19 pages. We know that it's a lot of information, but uh, you still have one and a half months to fill that in. So um, yeah, uh, please uh, start working on it now. I know there's Christmas in between, so I really recommend that you start working on it now. Um, yeah, so going back, I think I've covered the different documents that you need to go through and different reference materials. So with this, um, I will stop sharing my screen and we can go into the Q and A. So with this, I think I've covered everything and I think we can um, move on to the Q&A session of our uh, of our webinar. So I will stop sharing and I'm hoping that we have some questions coming in from the crowd. OK, so um, let's start with the first one. Um, if my colleague participated, if my colleagues participated and won the grant four years ago, can we still apply for the grant? Yes. Um, we, uh, as you can see, Bolivia won the opportunity two times. So um, we're not discriminating in the sense of if you've done it once, we're not going to say you won't get it again. So um, yeah, um, there is a possibility that um, yeah we will choose you. But of course, um, it will really depend on your application form, what you're trying to do. So the selection is um, quite fair in that sense. So yeah, that is a yes. Can we levitate the test product inside the capsule? If yes, how? OK, I think I'll give this um, to Thorben. Yeah, I guess this is a question to me. Um, yes, uh, probably I'm, I'm a little bit interested in what you have in mind, but in principle, it's feasible. So we had also some experiments uh, where we released something inside the capsule so that there's a, there was a freely falling object inside the capsule. Uh, this is fe feasible. For instance, there was a deployment test of a rover, uh, which should then, um, yeah, within some seconds, uh, reach the sur soil surface, yeah, to mimic a landing of a of a rover on an asteroid, for instance. Yeah, there are there are concepts feasible, uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah, to do such uh, uh, such things. Okay, thank you one. very much. 
Um, sorry, my screen froze a bit. I'm looking for the next question. We are a team from Tunisia. Um, are we allowed to consult with experts from a private aerospace company? Should that be included in the application form? Thank you for the question. So um, as I've explained um, earlier, um, they are not eligible in the sense of they are a company, but they can be your external um, supporters. So in the application form, I think I showed you, I can show it again. I... So they, since they're not eligible, they cannot be on your team, but you can include them under external support. So if you're working with their space company, um, please include the information here, but don't put them under the team member or under project coordinator because these people have to be eligible. And uh, at the moment, we haven't opened the eligibility criteria to uh, companies. OK, um, going back. The next question is, do you have interplanetary network activities during the program? Interplanetary networks. Um, <laughs> I'm can maybe Ahmed, can you? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I see Webin is asking to elaborate. So I have yeah. some communication students at my channel and I'm asking about their activities. Um, I am not quite sure what you mean by interplanetary mm -hmm. communication. If you can elaborate a bit, that would be great. Are there any other questions? Um, I know there was a lot of information for all of you, <laughs> but and everything is on the website. You can find everything on the documents, but this is actually your chance to ask Thorben any technical um, things related um, to the Berman Drop Tower and Gravity Tower Berman Pro. OK, um, I see that Ahmed has elaborated. So communication in space. Communication in space. Um, drop test is a ground opportunity, so um, I'm I'm a bit confused on what you mean by communication in space. Does anyone have any other questions? Okay, uh, so okay, I guess uh, Hazuki he he would like to consider some communications uh, between yeah linking I don't know activities in in space, but no, 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 this 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 uh, program is not dedicated to, to such uh, activities. Yeah, so you have to consider about an experiment which should be done in in a microgravity environment. But you can make use of uh, of two free falling objects inside the capsule, and, and also to mimic or to to show uh, communication uh, possibilities. But there is no direct uh, uh, activities in the, in the sense that you connect to a to space, yeah, or uh, an in space cooperation. So that you can do it in microgravity. So you should you should consider. Whether microgravity or even vacuum, yeah, which uh, uh, which is uh, required if for for communication, for instance, uh, antennas are important, and if you have a CubeSats or another satellite, uh, they need to deploy antennas, and the mechanics for deploying the the antenna is also, yeah, is uh, sophisticated because uh, you, you you yeah you can have to do it for instance lightweight. And you cannot do it probably in, uh, under one G condition. So for a demonstrator, you can make use of microgravity for a deployment demonstrator, antenna deployment. This is an idea, but uh, communication, yeah. What what is the relevance for microgravity? Yeah. Thank you very much, Marvin. I saw that someone had their hand raised. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure to write it in the chat. Uh, next, yeah. The next question is from yeah. Anuja. Yeah, um, Thorben, is there any camera available inside the capsule? Yes, so we pro we can provide you with our high speed camera system so that you have to not to 
to uh, buy a very high, uh, expensive uh, uh, crash safe uh, uh, high speed camera system. So we can provide you uh, with uh, several systems and this is available. Yeah. So if you sh like to investigate your effect or, or your, your phenomenon in, in, uh, in our capsule, so then we can provide you our high speed camera system, but only on site. So uh, this will be implemented during the integration week. You can do tests. Uh, during that week and also do the uh, 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 microgravity tests and then the tower in the second week. So for this uh, time period, you can use our high-speed camera system or other instruments which should, which might be available here at some. Thank you very much. I think that was clear. Does anyone have any other questions? Um, <laughs> I job, guess. Yeah. For yeah, working at SARM. <laughs> yeah, so then go on our website and uh, look for open positions. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Um, this is really your chance to ask about anything technical related um, to microgravity experimentation in the drop tower itself. Okay. It is possible to include an EEG. What is the EEG? The unique Yeah, Asma, science. if you can uh, uh, break okay. down the acronym EEG for us. So for we had we had neuroscience experiments at some so with the MEA system so. A multi electron array so to they tested uh, uh, activities of cell by uh, me measuring potentials inside the cells so that's uh, this is this was feasible yeah so if you if this is a similar system okay thank you very much okay so I, I'm not a biologist, but yeah, but usually uh, probably this is a good point uh, to to uh, to mention that uh, commercial hardware can be used in our tower. Yeah, so we have to look a little bit on the mounting concept and whether there are internal um, yeah, weaknesses so that uh, that they can uh, be yeah uh, not destroyed, but uh, they can then um, uh, have an influence on the uh, during the desolation forces. So uh, for the, for this, uh, yeah, you can make use of uh, of components. You should read our manual and look what are the uh, environmental conditions, and so yeah, make sure. But you, there's no need for for use of, for the use of uh, space qualified hardware. You can use commercial hardware, yeah. Cots hardware. Thank you, Thorben. There's another question um, about the IMU sensors. Can you yeah, yeah. get any data of your calibrated each, IMU sensors? Yeah, each capsule is equipped with uh, with an IMU, so you can have this uh, this data. One from Anuja, previous experience. What is the data from previous experiments? Is it possible? No, the, 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 the data is owned by the scientists, so then you have to address this question to, to them. If you're interested in a specific experiment, maybe we can connect you um, to the scientists that did the experiment, but uh, yeah, um, Zarm, Yunusa, we can't uh, just um, disclose that information to you, so um, let us know in detail. Um, this last question, this experiment is... Any connection with space radio protection for astronauts? Yeah, okay, but then radio protection, so radio protection is a relation to microgravity, yeah, so... Um, to shield uh, um, uh, radio communication, so then there's no probably no need for for my So that it's probably you or you have a device which should be work or deployed or what else. So please make sure that there is a microgravity relevance. Yeah. Oh, I think the first question is from Georgina. 
Um, as I am part of the same university and country that won a uh, drop test before, does it affect um, your, po uh, your possibilities in this round? Um, basically, I would say no, we are open. Um, as you've seen, we've chosen Bolivia two times. So if your application form is valid, is feasible, and is interesting, we will select um, your team again, no matter if you're part of the same university or uh, country or whatever. But it's really up to what you bring in the application form and your idea. The next question is, can a university in Nigeria participate? Of course, please join us. <laughs> uh, university, space agency, uh, NPO, I actually haven't reached Africa yet in, through drop tests, so please apply. Uh, the next question is from Suraj. In the capsule, is there any camera set up to record our experiment? I think it was explained, but yeah, um, Thorbin, if you can elaborate yeah. on. Yeah, so we, we can provide a high speed camera system. So uh, and this can be used uh, during your stay at, at the Bremen Drop Tower. So we will provide you with such a system as, uh, as I mentioned. So we have a new system with 4 HD, uh, 4 HD uh, capabilities. And we can, yeah, especially provide this uh, this camera as well as uh, high uh, um, lenses and illumination systems. So you have not to take care about that because you, uh, there are special cameras uh, and very expensive cameras. So so you have not to buy your camera. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is. Is it mandatory that the team leader is a professor working at the university or can it be anyone, including a student? I believe for this one, we have asked, um, it was in the announcement of opportunity document maybe, that we that person is a PhD or higher. Let me check again. Um, we don't want it to be a student in the sense of if there's anything that student will have to take on the responsibilities. So we um, we would like to have it as a, a person who can take the responsibilities. It should be listed in an announcement of opportunity documents somewhere. So uh, let me get back to you on that while we answer some other questions. Oh, actually, are there it was this the last question right now. OK, um, does anyone have any other questions? Um, if you have any technical questions, this is your time to ask Thorben because he's here right now. If you have any admin questions, you can ask us. Let me just confirm the uh, team leader part. Oh, we have another question. How? Uh, so how is the reimbursement of the travel cost organized? So basically um, for the travel, uh, it's not uh, that uh, actually you and USA, we will be issuing the flight tickets, we will be issuing the travel. So there is no cost on your side that you need to pay up first and we reimburse. Basically, we work directly with you, um, um, asking of your schedule, asking where you live, where, where you want to fly from, and we arrange from there. So um, there's no cost in the beginning that um, you would need to uh, uh, spend in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I think for one, the hotel for the team leader, I think that needs to be paid by that person up hand and then we reimburse. But for the travel, there there should be no uh, reimbursing afterwards in the sense of we provide you with tickets already in the first place. Does anyone have any other questions? Azuki, uh, in terms of the hotel, so uh, it, uh, it could be also invoiced, yeah. So there's a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's that's also true. So um, regarding that part, we will of course be in connection. We will be talking to you, you know, deciding the uh, concrete schedule and details. So yeah, um, it, it depends on really the team and how we uh, discuss and arrange. I see another question. OK, there's a lot more coming in uh, from Liliana. What kind of accelerometer do you have? Yeah, um, we have a very precise one. We have uh, IMA EMU, so it's uh, um, um, uh, like a, fi a fiber optical uh, uh, system. So it's very precise. Um, uh, you will find any information on our payload user guide. So then you can also download the data sheet. 
And uh, and in the next uh, payload user guide, I also implement uh, some newer accelerometers. So we have uh, we have from ASC IMU IMU seven uh, systems. Um, this, this are also uh, industrial grade um, uh, yeah IMUs, so that can be used. But uh, please look in the payload user guide, then there will you find any information. Thank you very much. I think that was clear. Um, another question is from Suraj. If we use some glass material as ex uh, as equipment for the experiment, is there any possibility of any breakage of the equipment? Yeah, if, if, if you plan to use glass, so there's the, it might be the case that it can uh, break. So it depends a little bit. So uh, for instance, we had experiments with flask from glass, so flask, uh, um, and they survived e e each drop. So the, the scientist has also some doubts that uh, the special flask um, will not survive the, the impact. Um, but uh, yeah, he he considered a lot of uh, flasks uh, uh, for 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 his research, but at the end, uh, no flasks uh, <laughs> brought. So that. Uh, that works. So, but it, it depends on the, uh, the case study. So, I have no idea what kind of glass you would like to use. So, it, it depends on the mounting. But we, uh, yeah, we will share our experiences with you. So, how how it could be mounted. So, this is one more or less than our task, and that uh, that will survive uh, the impact or the uh, yeah the impact uh, of up to 50 g. So, in general, we have 40 g. So that. Um, yeah, it's uh, more or less, uh, I would say, and if it's not the case, so then you can consider, you can bring more spare parts with you so that we, for each drop, we insert uh, a new a new glass uh, uh, piece or what else, uh, you, what is required. Thank you very much. I think that was clear as well. Uh, the next question uh, is from Georgina. In the case that you don't win, uh, will you give us feedback to try again? Yes, um, we will. We will try to give you feedback. Um, of course, as I showed you, we have a clear eligibility uh, and selection criteria, so we can give you feedback on uh, what we thought you could work on uh, for the future uh, rounds. Um, for drop tests, basically these years we've been uh, of course, there was COVID, but we've been doing one round per year. So um, even if you don't get it um, next year in the 2020-2023 uh, round, uh, you, you always have time to apply to the next one. I also want to answer the question earlier about the team leader. I, I will throw it in the chat. So in the uh, sorry, in the announcement of opportunity document, it says um, the text that I've typed in there. So each team must be supported by a team leader whose role will be to supervise the work of the team members. So we didn't specify this time the level of this, per the level, uh, if, it, if that person needs to be a professor or a PhD or anything, but I would suggest um, it would be someone that the university or the organization trusts um, as someone that can take care of the student team or, or the uh, team members itself. So um, actually, in this case, I guess we leave it up to your organization. But um, yeah, so in that sense, we don't have a specific uh, level. Um, but um, in, in these terms, that since that person has to take responsibilities, I would say um, it would be better if it's not a student. But um, even if it's a student, that's not a no-go. So it's up to your organization to decide. Are there any other questions? Uh, one, I see one from Suraj. If we want to use some e equipment like UV visible uh, spectroscopy or electronic microscope, will you be able to provide these equipments? Um, this is the Thorbin. Yeah. Um, so we have, we have a microscope here so that you can, uh, but this is not a microscope uh, which is capable to, to drop in the drop tower. Uh, that is some instruments can be used uh, on site and um, and uh, we have no dedicated uh, UV visible spectroscopy equipment available. Um, so that is more be on, on your side, so your task to, to provide that. Um, so there's, yeah, that's, it's, I think it's more or less a gray zone. So we have here some, some equipment available 
and uh, but not so equipment what is specified for for experiments so but for instance if you require a vacuum in in a chamber so then we can use uh, the vent line system or implement a, a turbomolecular pump to pump it out so then we can provide uh, our uh, our um, uh, high speed camera system or or uh, we have uh, we can add a, a laser system for instance so that in, in, in this thing, but if it's a specified uh, device, yeah, so um, yeah, yeah, so that's uh, that, yeah, uh, I, I must say, okay, it's, it's a case by case study, but uh, um, yeah, uh, usually uh, we have standard equipment available, especially equipment available which can be used on ground. And in the capsule, yeah, it's an, another topic. So if you need a very special thing, so we, we cannot buy it, especially for, for, for you. So then you have to consider what is uh, uh, feasible. For instance, if you would like to investigate something with Schlieren Optik or, or what else. So that's it's your responsibility to, to build it and, and to show also during uh, the development phase of your experiment that it, that it works and that it is capable to be to be dropped, yeah. So there's there's a gray zoom, but uh, yeah, uh, at the end uh, we can we can check it, yeah. If if you need a special equipment, but first of all, you you should submit your idea and and how you yeah how was your plan to realize uh, uh, your experiment? Exactly. Thank you, uh, Thorben. So of course, uh, at the Bremen Drop Tower at the University of Bremen, there are let's say things that um, you can use, but of course, please indicate that in the application form, what you need, what you um, would like to use. And uh, please understand that basically for the experiment, um, it is your responsibility to build it and test it before uh, you bring it to Bremen. So um, if there's any additional costs, let's say if you need to buy something, um, make sure that your understanding is that for anything related to the experiment, prototype the setup itself, um, it's borne by you. And if, uh, and Zarm, if uh, the University of Bremen has, um, let's say some of the things that they can lend to you or they can um, generously provide to you, you can use that. But basically um, make, make sure that the burden on the financial side is ba basically coming from your team. Uh, so I think that covers the other question uh, there. We have one more question about uh, the organisms. So yeah, it's so the same. Yeah, so <laughs> what kind of organism shall we provide? Shall we? Um, that's a little bit tricky. Yeah. So um, if 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 you have some doubts to uh, enter Germany with uh, organisms, so then I would like recommend that you identify probably some cooperation partners who who can provide uh, those uh, organisms. So we here at some not have not that biological departments so that there is uh, plenty of different organisms. So we have some uh, organisms here, cyanobacteria, for instance, but ne, so um, but usually as again, it's uh, in your responsibility a little bit more. Yeah, with uh, what kind of organism you like to use and and what else and and at the end, yeah, we can we can discuss. Yeah, I have I have some or we, we, I know a lot of scientists uh, in the microgravity field or or some other colleagues yeah, uh, from the biological uh, uh, field. So then I can, may ask them whether some organisms can be yeah, um, uh, yeah, uh, used uh, for, for, for drop tower operation. But then this should be then on the bilateral level with you and, and uh, those colleagues to identify it. So there are also some costs yeah, for for uh, for such organism, it depends, yeah. But uh, usually, we will not provide organism. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question about some chemicals. So, how do we carry the chemicals yeah. uh, with us in the flight? Um, that's exactly what we're asking for in the application form. Um, it was section um, where it said transportation to Germany. You would have to do your research on how you want to bring. Uh, what you need for the experiment setup. Of course, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to email us. But uh, basically, um, it is your responsibility to do the research on how to bring it to Germany or how to, let's say, buy it um, in Germany after you've arrived. 
So yeah. um, please do your research on um, the transportation and uh, yeah, how to bring things to Germany. Yeah, and in terms of chemicals, so uh, with standard ones we can provide. Yeah, but if you have some special ones, uh, yeah, then it should be discussed. So basically put everything in the application form, <laughs> all yeah. the information in the application form so we can decide on the feasibility um, of the project and if um, let's say if it takes time or if it's um, costly or uh, so we can understand uh, yeah what your idea is and how feasible it is. Okay, right. I think we've covered all the questions. Um, I'll give everyone a few seconds. Well, I forgot to share one thing, so I'm going to switch my screen again. Hold on a second. So um, to give you an idea of the past things, um, past drop test rounds, um, I'm going to go back to our UNUSA website. So when you go to the Access to Space for All Initiative website, um, down here you can see a page called Access to Space for All Awardees. So please quick click there and then you can find drop test awardees. And as I've said, we've done seven rounds. And when you click on their, uh, on, let's say each team, you would find a summary and all that, but you can find different news activities and publications and the reports of uh, their actual <coughs> experiment at the drop test. So if you want to have an idea of what they were able to do, um, what kind of activities they're doing afterwards, please take a look at the awardees website. Each team basically has a, a page that can inform you with more ideas. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to explain that earlier. So um, I don't see any more questions. So in that case, um, thank you everyone for your interest in drop test and for joining in on a Friday. Uh, please um, answer our questionnaire form before you leave. Um, we would really like to provide you with better webinars. So uh, please answer that um, um, for us. And basically, as we said, uh, the deadline is the 22nd of January. You still have a bit of time to uh, put together an application form. Uh, we are really looking forward to new ideas, especially from different countries and regions that haven't um, done drop tests before. So thank you again um, to everyone who's here. Thank you again to Thorben, um, to our partners at Zarm, and of course, DLR for providing us with this opportunity. And yeah, we hope to receive a lot of applications from you. So thank you and have a nice day, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.